Thank you. Welcome to Good News Week and the big news? Don't worry, Haiti, help is on its way as aid agencies rush medicine, food and water to the victims of the earthquake. One American group is sending what they really need, solar-powered talking Bibles. <laughs> Go, you Christians! Solar-powered talking Bibles are awesome, but it takes a hell of a lot to make a house. <laughs> the holy books are called The Proclaimer and are distributed by an organisation called Faith Comes By Hearing who apparently believe all deaf people are going to hell. <laughs> the Proclaimer is perfect for any Haitians who've always wanted a futuristic, environmentally sound talking Bible machine, but were too busy crawling through mud to realise it. <laughs> the Proclaimer can work in the jungle, the desert, or even on the moon. Projects its message to as many as 300 people. And best of all, if you smash it with a hammer, it shuts the hell up. <laughs> The evangelists say the Proclaimer is designed for poor and illiterate people, which has always been religion's key demographic. <laughs> because while you're searching in the rubble of your shattered home for your missing family, what you really need to hear about is an all-seeing, all-powerful God who could have saved them, but decided not to. <laughs> Haiti needs food and shelter, and they get solar-powered audio books that work on the moon. I think this comes under his famous mysterious ways clause. <laughs> uh, very exciting news from South Australia. They've launched a bid to design the Navy's new class of submarine. South Australian subs. <laughs> because only submarines can defeat that pesky Taliban. <laughs> and South Australia already has a corker of an idea. It's this metal barrel, right? And all the bodies, I mean, I mean crew, are squeezed in. And then the whole thing gets filled up with acid. Oxygen, I mean oxygen. It's a barrel, right? You put, you put crew, oh, it's a, oh. Oh, Snowtown subs, go for it. The federal government wants to replace our six Collins class subs with 12 new vessels. The Collins was originally based on a Swedish design and put together from a flat pack with an Allen key. Some say we should buy an existing design because the Navy already has enough to deal with without constantly hearing, who made your submarine, your mum? <laughs> and to avoid the problems of the Collins class, one idea they're proposing is a submarine that functions entirely on land. This would make it virtually unsinkable. <laughs> yeah. Unless it was accidentally driven into the water. <laughs> Not to put too fine a point on it, but Obama is coming! Obama is coming! Obama! Obama's coming! And Kevin's mum said it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> the White House has confirmed the President will make his first official visit to Australia next month, and he's really excited about appearing on Hey Hey It's Saturday. <laughs> But it's going to be a bit embarrassing, our Prime Minister showing a guest around a country he hasn't actually been to since becoming our Prime Minister. <laughs> Obama even thinks hanging out with Rudd might improve his popularity. Well, it's working for Tony Abbott. <laughs> Australia's towns and cities are already lobbying for the President to visit. Obama says he'll get to as many places as he can, and if he can't fulfil his promises, well, just add him to the list. <laughs> Sadly, Barack will not be visiting Melbourne in case locals mistake him for a mature age Indian student. <laughs> and that's the good news. It's good news, Lee. Thank you. Good evening. Tonight, showered, shaved and shampooed the allegedly clean and sober Mikey Robbins.
Uh, her show is charming and alarming. Her national tour starts at the Powerhouse in Brisbane in two weeks, and her mind is a magical, frightening place. Kitty Flanagan. <laughs> And heading back on the road with Jim Owen on Ice, the show that's putting his children through school. Jim Owen. <laughs> it's not actually Jim Owen on Ice. It's something, what do you want? It's not actually Jim Owen on Ice. It's something smells funny. Something smells funny? Yes. It's a different, it's a different show. It's just the same show, but different title, really. That's oh, OK. <laughs> Something smells funny. That's Jim Owen with correct. something smells funny on the road in a town near you. Probably. And it's me. <laughs> And they're asking no favours from the fragrant Claire Hooper. <laughs> Kicking off his tour in Adelaide on February the 20th with the brilliant show, ready for this, the king of the 88 keys, Tim Minchin. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! And returning to the Melbourne International Comedy Festival with I'm Not Sure About the Music, the always stunning Colin Lane. Uh -huh. Thank you. Tim Minchin, lovely to have you on the show. Oh, it's really nice to be here. <laughs> uh, 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 you're touring throughout the country, starting uh, off with the Adelaide Festival? Well, to be honest, the tour was a couple of months ago. I've got... Oh, Jesus, <laughs> damn it, you're on a hot streak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my name's Jim Mitchell, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm a potter. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I just, it went well, so we added some dates. I had a holiday, and I've got four, four children. Uh, different diseases. You added some dates. I added some dates. <laughs> You're almighty Tim. You just just can add yeah, days can to the to time. the year. You're incredible. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Stop talking now, Colin. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I'm just as far as I know, I'm just doing Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney, Newcastle. Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you a font of knowledge? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great. The second row of the audience is now hosting the show. <laughs> More. Proficiently than you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but the w way you've done your tie is, well, I assume all the stripes on the tie are vertical until you do it, and then you're yes. perfectly horizontal it's, and then it, vertical. It, it's amazing that the nice range of suits that Oshkosh Bagosh have got out this year. <laughs> Hello, Kitty. Have I got your tour dates right? You are yes. touring. Yes. yes, I am. I am touring, and I'm delighted to be touring because um, I'm actually quite hated in my own neighbourhood at the moment, which is um. Why is I that? Know, I, well, uh, my car got egged. What? Yeah, my car what? got egged, which was a bit sad. Let's not go into why. I mean, look, why? sure, I parked across their driveway for a few days, but I didn't realise. <laughs> um, and then my house got burgled, and that was a bit. Well, I thought. Were they your eggs? <laughs> actually, I thought it got burgled. I just actually am quite messy and I hadn't realised. <laughs> I'd been away and forgotten. I came home and went, who's ransacked my house? <laughs> oh, yeah, me. <laughs> I heard so. that about you from Akmal. He told me that... You can get a hotel room dirtier than anybody else that he's ever not, met. Not dirtier, messier. Messier. I'm really messy, I'm not dirty. Well, well, well Akmal thinks you're a slob. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when John Daly told Tiger Woods he had trouble. <laughs> and Jim, looking forward to getting back on the road again? Well, I wasn't really off the road. I had a Christmas holiday with my kids and we went on tour. Uh, so I took the kids on, on a touring holiday where I did gigs. Can I just say, I'm sorry to interrupt, Jim, but just re-egging... I had a great story there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'll, yeah I'll, I'll, I just want to say re-egging. Um, <laughs> re-egging? Yeah, just, just on egging, if anyone's thinking of doing some egging, um, it does damage the car. You think it damages the car? You should see what it does to the chook. <laughs> see, this is my point. You should see what it does to Juco, and we're eating these things. Oh, I'm just making the point that we might want to think about eggs. <laughs> Jim, you had a good story. Well, no, it's gone, no. though. <laughs> uh, forget that. Well, my car's outside if you'd like to egg it. Maybe that's how I get punished these days. <laughs> well, that's a, it's good. I didn't think I'd be placed in such a quandary. Yes. Um, I'm going back to you, Col. Yeah, Col. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't got anything to say, but I thought me say. not saying anything would be actually more interesting than that team. 
Should we just start? Should we just move start. aside to get the banter out of the way because it's not working and just yeah. head sure. straight in? <laughs> Act one is what's the story? Mikey, Kitty, Jim, yes. eyes on the ball. Right here. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. go. Oh. What's happening? What's going on? A bunch oh. of people in that, glasses. That, who is that? What's that? <gasps> what's that oh. about? Ooh, what's that? Yes, oh. right. Yeah. That's the cheap version of Avatar. <laughs> It's called Ava Crap. It probably has better dialogue than Avatar. <laughs> so it was James Cameron that egged your car. <laughs> I went to see Avatar in 3D yeah. and I, at the cinema and I asked this guy where Roe L was. Uh, it turned out he was in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> It is to do with, with 3D, because the, the people at the front are all wearing 3D glasses, but they're, they're in a pub, which is just going to freak someone out at some stage. <laughs> I think it's some Sky Channel in England. Uh, they're going to start showing sporting events in 3D in, on English television. Yeah. So, like, I, I think the first one was a soccer match between Manchester United and Leeds, and so the idea is, like, you know, if you're, you know, the, the film from the goalie's perspective, the ball comes right at you. Yep. And then when someone fakes an injury, they fake it right at you. <laughs> And when they hug each other, you get hugged. <laughs> it sounds fantastic. <laughs> oh, but my, my wife is blind in her left eye. Doesn't see anything in 3D. So when she goes to do a 3D movie, she just sits there and goes, what's the point? Do you need both eyes? You do, apparently so, yeah. Oh, there's a whole group of people, sad, lonely, one-eyed people that we'd forgotten about. <laughs> I mean, no, seriously, Paul. We've all been no. living it up with Avatar. What a great, <laughs> joyous wonder if there's all these people going... Ah, rah, rah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I suspect a lot of pirates are very upset. <laughs> Bastards! Trying to get that out of the yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I hate you, McDermott. I've been working on that oh, pirate thing now. Oh, yeah. They'd already oh, done the crash to him and everything, and he was ready to deliver it. And, and then just I'm going to stab you in the eye with a pen, see how you like it. Woohoo! Uh, ladies and gentlemen, they did get it right, sort of, more or less. There we go. Television history was made recently when British football fans watched the world's first soccer broadcast in 3D. <laughs> With Avatar taking $2 billion at the box office, television networks are clamouring for 3D. Of course, it's no substitute for a good story well told. Unless it's a crap story adequately told by nine-foot flat-faced Smurfs. <laughs> And to be honest, uh, when you think about it, we've had 3D movies for ages. They're called plays. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the old form. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where? Where? Go and see some theatre. Theatre's dead. Go and see some theatre, you young the folk. Theater. You I was an Avatar hater as well. All of you Avatar haters, I was. But what I did was I went in undercover. I saw the movie just to, you know, find out more about the culture of Avatar and um, what people were going on about. I, I made friends with some Avatar people and then I ended up fighting for Avatar. It's fine, it was a movie reference, but it was a pretty long boat of drive. <laughs> Do you know, I took, my, um, I took my 3D glasses home and I was really excited. I went, I'm gonna look at stuff in 3D. Like your and ends. Everyone <laughs> pointed out to me that everything in my flat is in 3D already. <laughs> Not only in 3D, but all over the floor from what we've heard. <laughs> But 3D TV is the big new thing. 3D TV, SBS ratings at 10 o'clock Friday night will go through the roof. <laughs> 16D and 3D would be nice, wouldn't it? Just... <laughs> How many D is that? 16D. 16D times 3D. No, 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 no. 48D. 48D. That's Are you talking not... about bras, 16D? It... He's talking yeah. about bras. <laughs> talking about no, no, bras. Sorry, for 3D. the ladies, that was a bra reference? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's not, a, not a great one. What would be good then? What would be good? Uh, oh, no. A 10E? That would be great. A 10D, yeah. yeah. No, no, 16's no, 10D's about small. across the back. So 16 across the back is quite a, a swimmer. A swimmer might have 16. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying that? Thorpe's got a 16D. Yes. I think so. I'm hitting middle age. I've got a 16D. Yeah. You know when you get the little man boobs? I'm, got, I'm actually yeah. thinking of wearing a training bra just because, um, you know, it's starting to develop in that area. Not really, not worth mentioning on television, but um, just between Can we see them now in 3D? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but wearing 3D glasses in real life just makes everything look like there's double, and that'd be quite nice seeing four boobs. <laughs> Isn't that what the I Avatar suppose. people had? Do they four have four boobs. boobs? Don't they have four boobs and three, no? Yeah, they... they, they oh, their horses had six legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's an easy mistake to make. <laughs> <laughs> This, this, no wonder you're not that popular at the lesbian club. <laughs> this is why you should never go milking. <laughs> why? Well, they're groaning. But who milks a horse, Mikey? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 What I do after the show, Tim, is my own damn business. <laughs> the 3D technology is incredible. The only other place you can find such realism is outside. <laughs> Claire Tim Collin, do no harm. Yep. Watch the little screen. Okay. Is uh, that a sperm that whale? One? Man with a probe. Is that, is that uh, what it is? Probe in sperm whale. Oh. Oh, oh we'll square around probe in sperm whale. <laughs> what, right, what do well, we have to do? Sure. Um, yeah, about. yeah. It's, it's a reference to a, a news story, an environmental <laughs> yeah. one. Oh, the good okay, news. So, week. Yeah, yeah. It's so, good news week. Yeah, that's it's, it's the show that you're on okay. at the moment. Yeah. yeah. I always oh, thought with this show there couldn't be a bad combination of people, but I'm. <laughs> I know, Maybe. isn't it? Isn't it weird? weird. <laughs> oh, me. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> so I think it might be about um, the New Zealanders and the Australian scientists maybe um, trying to lead by example for the Japanese whalers who are, you know, do they do they do science on whales by killing them and doing the science? And I think it's that there's an expedition to the Antarctic on a New Zealand boat. Australian New Zealand scientists. They're going to. They're going to study whales without killing them. But yeah. th how do you eat them? <laughs> yeah, of course, they're not going to find out the ultimately important thing, which yeah. is how fast they can go if they're really scared. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or how yummy they are when they're scared. Yeah. I thought they just, they did, they put that um, the probe, probe into them so would, they would, like, was just quite a, a, a horrible way where they just died slowly. That would be, <laughs> that'd be awful and not worth mentioning in front of a friendly audience. <laughs> Special kind of guy. Yeah, right? well, just I thought, thought it might be a, a Wi Fi router. Yeah. <laughs> so the whale, so if the whale swallowed someone, that'd have something to do. <laughs> yeah, so like Jonah inside the whale yeah. can also check his do emails. His Twitter. And he can do yeah. some yeah, Inside whale. Yeah. Not as bad as you might think. <laughs> could well survive the. Oh, could survive. Could. Will survive. Oh, bam! <laughs> oh. I thought it might be a. I thought it might be a story about sperm. I thought they might be abstract here. Is it just um, me, or did did that just did sex leap off the screen <laughs> all the way through? That you've got it, sperm whale, and then a man with a big hard um, probe, yeah. and then boom. And the whale was touching your leg while we were looking at the images. Yeah, and whales are so sexy. They are. Honestly, if I had to choose between a huge-breasted, six-legged horse and a whale, I. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't know <laughs> where to turn. What's a, For the um, right money, you can have both. Yeah. <laughs> I know. What's, what's a router? It's a... You know, are you in the 70s in Australia? They called you a router. In America, it's a router. Yep, yep. What? Right. what? <laughs> Router, router. Router, is that a technical a sexual term? Sexual deviant from you New know Zealand. How you used to have sex with lots of buoys? Yeah, yep, absolutely. <laughs> that was really fucking clever, you fuckers. <laughs> That's it, I won't say anything clever all night. That was my one funny joke, and it. They enjoyed it, he didn't understand it. Don't, don't blame them for my stupidity. That's, they're doing a lovely job. Uh, I'm not supporting you. Buoy. Yeah, buoy, what's a buoy? Is that like a, 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 a ghost? The buoy! It's like, um, buoy, but a friendly ghost, I guess. And buoy, it's okay, I'm not too offensive. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Anyway. Okay, it's points. all right, you've got it right. They've got it right, ladies and gentlemen. Buoy. A team of hero scientists is on its way to Antarctica to prove that stabbing whales with a big fork for scientific purposes is unnecessary. Japan seemed confused by the move, then responded, Oh, 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 we told you it was for science, didn't we? 
But Japan insists their research is humanitarian and they'll keep killing whales until they rescue that little wooden boy. <laughs> So after one lip-smacking round of Good News Week, the Robins team are on 10 points, the Hooper team on 10 points. Coming up, more of the good stuff. It's Good News Week. During the break, as we looked at some nudie pictures on our computer, both teams were given three clues to a recent strange but true story. Robins, Flanning and Anne McEwen got... <laughs> I am Arak, god of the north. <laughs> I've come for all your women and mead. Uh, a farmyard friend? Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I'm filled with milk. <laughs> uh, we also have global warming. This will demonstrate to you global warming. That's not going to foam, is it? It's not going to foam. Don't I make don't it know, foam. it's global warming. This don't let it foam. No. What? What? Oh, I don't want any of that stuff in the studio anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like it. I'm not happy with that. Can we go with something else next time round? Oh. I don't like it. I'm not no happy. More? I've, I... got, I've got phobias now about uh, getting foam in the face. So, so... <laughs> uh, oh, that's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, show it again. Bring back those horrible memories. It's yeah. like the world's worst porno. <laughs> it's like the reverse tar and feathering, really, isn't it? <laughs> Look, we're all wishing we were at that show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, look what we've got instead after the health and safety people came in. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have this. Woo! Oh. Woo! And Hooper, Minchin and Lane have... <laughs> oh, look, and he's wearing, he's wearing one of Paul's suits. <laughs> uh, that is, in fact, the suit I was wearing last week that got all the foam over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a cuddly, a cuddly friend. That's gorgeous. Oh, watch out. Oh. If you go down to the woods today, <laughs> it's going to get a little weirdo. <laughs> if you go down to the woods today, there's going to be a teddy bear in a tuxedo. <laughs> For every bear that's dressed in taffeta, there's a girl teddy bear that thinks she's dressed better than her. Today's the day the teddy bears have a bitch fight. <laughs> Even the teddy was doing up this <laughs> Colin Lane freaking out the kitties. Hi. Uh, we also have a bottle. Yes. Oh. <laughs> and we also have this. <laughs> Sing! All the single ladies, all the single ladies. All the single ladies, 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 all the single ladies. What's the song called? If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. You can't be mad with me now that he wants it. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. That was beautiful. That was like sort of Elton John meets Beyonce. Yeah, <laughs> nothing's going to happen there. That's never going to happen. <laughs> Our teams will weave their magic on all of that a little later. Now to a game called Survey Says Kitty. Yes. Gorgeous. Kitty. An insurance yes. company study has found in the last 30 years, 37 people have died as a result of what? 
I don't know. Shaking vending machines to get free items? Sorry, you put me off. Attempting to copulate with livestock? Colin. Yes. Colin. Come on. Let's... Colin. I did Colin. find it. Very... I did find it very funny. <laughs> <laughs> but Mike, he was getting a little bit upset. He used that tone. He had that tone with yeah, you. Yeah, he had that Colin. Tone. Yeah, Colin. 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 Choking on communion wafers. <laughs> okay. It is um, real. Which uh, one? I, I reckon maybe not attempting to copulate with livestock. I think that'd probably be more than 37. <laughs> just, in, um, just in Queensland alone. <laughs> <laughs> and also, it depends on your definition of livestock. That could be quite broad, so... <laughs> um, Does it still count if you kill it first, do you mean? <laughs> Bestial necrophilia. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's flogging a dead horse. <laughs> I'm going to say shaking the vending machine to get some free items. OK, let's see if Kitty is right. Oh, um, yeah, five points. Yeah. It's that easy. According to a survey from North America, over 1,600 people have been victims of what crime? Being robbed by their mother? <laughs> hang, on, hang on, how specific is that? Is that like being robbed of your self-worth? <laughs> <laughs> because that is quite a crime. <laughs> uh, being logged in the boot of their car? Sorry, I shouldn't have said that because my mum will have a go at me and tell me I'm useless. <laughs> <laughs> or being bitten by a neighbour or co-worker? Thanks for clarifying. Um, I don't know. That sounds very mafia, the middle one. Dicks. There was a guy that robbed a bank in Canada and uh, it was a standoff for two days and they couldn't get any further with it and they went and got his mother and it was all over in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> his mum turned on. Because all men are scared of their mum. You know when you, people say to you, there's your mum, you shit yourself. <laughs> and then your mum comes straight in and cleans you up. Yeah. <laughs> Because she's been dead for ten years. Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. It's been a week. <laughs> I, I'm. What about? I'm going to say being bitten by a neighbour because I've certainly had some neighbours. I wouldn't mind biting. Shall we have a look? No. Oh! I'd actually. <laughs> Uh, and finally, it's estimated at any one time, 0.7% of the world's population are what? Juggling? Oh. Underwater? Oh. Or drunk? 0.7% yeah, than... of the world's population, any one time. Put all three together, that's how Jacques Cousteau died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I'm going to clap him. No one else is. I think it's underwater. Okay. Paul, Shall it? we go? We're yeah. underwater. No, no, no. 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 Shall we go? It's drunk. It's your is question. It is it I think it's drunk. drunk. I think it's drunk. drunk. Are we going with drunk? I don't know. Drunk. Yes. Drunk. 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 Go with drunk. What do you feel, audience? Drunk. Oh, oh, what are you? If you could just maybe have what a bit of a chat about though? amongst yourselves and respond as one rather than a rabble. <laughs> do we have an answer? Say drunk. Drunk. Yeah. Let's see if Kitty is right. Oh. Tim, every three minutes somewhere oh. on Earth, someone reports seeing what? A UFO? A vision from God? Or Michael Jackson? <laughs> Aren't they all the same thing, yeah. perhaps? <laughs> um, of the first two could be the same thing, a UFO or a vision from God. They could think that that was the same thing. Yeah. You, you talk, he asked you. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Well, look. Uh, well, you don't I'll, report. I'll, you don't no, you report don't report seeing Michael anymore. Jackson, and probably every time anyone sees uh, one of those Chinese people with the mask on riding to work, they probably think it's Michael Jackson. So, <laughs> um, so they're, they're riding along, going, woo, like that. <laughs> That's how they ride. Yeah. Yeah. They go over a bump. Yeah. And woo! Yeah. 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 A UFO sighting is very much an American phenomenon because it's a cultural thing. People spot UFOs because they've seen on telly and stuff. Whereas people thinking they've seen a vision from God, I mean... Yes? You know, your tie, Mikey and a goat's head. They're all <laughs> sort of divine there's a little, uh, There's a little area of the brain. If you stimulate it, people have a, uh, uh, a religious epiphany. Uh, in, yeah. fact, in fact, nearly all visions in history would now be uh, mental illnesses, which is why these days there's not so many prophets because everyone's like, schizophrenic. No. <laughs> as, op as opposed to... Ah, except they probably don't... They probably don't laugh. They probably don't go, schizophrenic, like that. That's... No, that would be wrong, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, um, I think uh, every three minutes somewhere on Earth someone reports a vision from God. Let's see if Tim is right. Sadly, it's oh. a UFO. Oh. Bah, Tim's bah. Wrong. Um, I, I, we have a slight crisis over here. I've got to go for a piss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you old people must be feeling pretty much the same at this point, eh? Uh, should we stop for a second? Oh, Tim, regale us with a song. <laughs> Jim Owen going for a piss. Uh. <laughs> All together at the chorus. Going for a urination. He's so Irish and cute, but he's still got a bladder like me and you, Jim. <laughs> Moen receiving a round of applause for coming back after a piss. <laughs> you people. This used to be the quick part of the show. I just want to remind people of that. Uh, Tim, if yeah. this report is true, 40% of the American population has never done what? Read a book? Eaten a vegetable other than potatoes? <laughs> or visited a dentist? Visited uh, a dentist perhaps because they can't afford it with the American... Oh, the uh, American health, health system. Health. I think that... Um, 40% of it, oh, but Americans all have those teeth. Yeah. Yes. You know yeah, those, those teeth that they've all got? The, the huge teeth. The, the pro-art veneers yeah. that they're always putting on in the makeup. I went and show. saw the Beach Boys the other day, and yeah, they, the, the, two, the, only, the two that used to be in the band, they're now really old, except their teeth, brand new teeth. Yeah. <laughs> they don't even bother putting the little gaps in, it's just like a... It's just like, a it's, it's kind of just... It's like that. <laughs> So have we got an answer for this I question? I think that 40% of Americans oh. uh, haven't visited a dentist. Let's see. Yes! Thank yeah. God! Five points! One more question. A recent study of 4,000 Australian women found a majority would rather lose their boyfriend than what? A mobile phone? Their favourite pair of shoes? Their teeth? I think, I anyway. think it's not the shoes. I, I no, personally, the shoes. like, I'd hate to lose my mobile phone because, like, boyfriend, one number, mobile phone, millions of replacement boyfriends right there in your hand, right? Like, True. And if you ask all Australian women, the 4,000 that don't like their boyfriends a bit very much, would go, oh, well, I'll keep the phone. Yeah. Can I get an upgrade and get rid of the boyfriend? Sweet! You know. Yeah. So. They probably didn't even have boyfriends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the single ladies. All, all the single ladies. ladies. All the we could be overthinking it slightly. <laughs> I mean, how, how many apps does the average boyfriend come with? <laughs> Do we have an answer? Their teeth. Their, no. their frickin' lady teeth. <laughs> <laughs> My pretty lady teeth. Frickin' lady teeth. <laughs> Let's have a look at if Tim's Lovely lady. right or Their wrong. Oh. 
Yes, according to a new study, losing her mobile is more upsetting to a woman than losing a boyfriend. Turns out women don't want a wedding these days, they just want the reception. Ah! Oh, yeah! Mobiles have got a lot more going for them than boyfriends. For example, unlike a man, your mobile will ring you the next day. <laughs> you can always call your boyfriend on your mobile, but you can't call anyone on your boyfriend. And sure, you can have sex with your boyfriend, but with a little ingenuity and... Oh, I'm not reading that. <laughs> Men are outraged, saying they should be a lot more important to women than a phone. Yeah, they should be, but they're not. <laughs> Over there now, 20 points. Over there, a sad and miserable 15 points. Oh. Up next, up cut. Oh, it's exciting. This is Upcut, three scrambled headlines from the week on the sticky green board to take the points on scramble. Jim Owen, you're on. All right. Good. Come on. Uh, you have wait for boozing divorcees worth bonking beats the gifts. Boozing. Just rearrange them into the sentences that uh, they should be. What? Beach. Hello. Ah, uh, an <laughs> <laughs> An easy quiet has settled over the audience. Worth. As we wait for something funny to happen. <laughs> Clearly it's taking a bit longer than we expected. Worth. 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 Quit. Sport forces. The gifts. <laughs> Are you completely happy with that? <laughs> Certainly that wasn't worth the wait. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to reconsider? Yes, hang on, let's have a look at it. Okay. We're in no rush, are we? <laughs> and he's rethinking it now, he's looking for... That could be a headline. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a lad. It's got to be a British paper, because they say bonking, isn't it? So, yeah. Uh, Australian would be rooting. <laughs> or, 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 or routing. <laughs> I was happy the way I had it, to be honest. All right. Can I go with that? Worth the wait. Worth you're, very, you're very, <coughs> you're very, you're <coughs> very slow. <laughs> I, I think it'd be worth the wait for the boozing divorcees. Because <laughs> it's fun to stay at the drunk lady's house. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, he's on a roll now. Worth the wait for divorces. Oh. Oh. I should have left it, shouldn't that I? Was that, gold. Was that was gold. That was gold. The first one, the top one, boozing, bonking beats. Could be names of bands, oh. couldn't it? The bonking beats. <laughs> <laughs> we had four. We had four divorces. Four boozing gifts. <laughs> I can't remember how I had it. <laughs> what about bonking for gifts? Yeah, bonking for oh. gifts sounds good. Don't, don't make it too personal. <laughs> <laughs> boozing, boozing. I, I think boozing and divorces. I don't know why. Um, boozing divorces, boozing beach divorces. I think. Yes. Yes. Boozing beach divorces and worth the wait. Oh, the. Yes. Yes. Worth. Yes. Yes. Worth yes. the wait. Yes. Yes. Really? <clears throat> no. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to end. <laughs> Jim Owen, ladies and gentlemen. The headlines were boozing beats bonking. Oh. Uh, we also had worth the wait. <laughs> and gifts for divorcees. Oh. So five out of a possible 15. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Owen, 10, four, five points, two points, one point. Jim Owen, five points. Uh, in a twist on the traditional wedding register, a UK department store has introduced a gift list for the recently divorced. Usually there's only two rounds of gift giving after a divorce. He gives her the house, the car and the kids and she gives him his testicles back. <laughs> the department store, Debenham, started the list after British law firms began offering divorce gift vouchers. Honey, I know we're thinking of staying together for the kids, but look, 10% off! <laughs> 
Uh, the top three requested gifts are white goods, furniture, and some way to pick up your shattered dreams. <laughs> oh, wow. Boxes of tissues are a useful gift for both sexes, although for quite different reasons. <laughs> Colin. Ah, <laughs> uh, you smutty, smutty people. <laughs> Colin Lane, the upcut board is calling you. Uh, for the magnificent Colin Lane, we have Taliban squid, boost wrong bed plan, giant island invasion. What? They make three headlines. Yes, they do. Head yes. in there. Yes, here's the first one. Uh, well, look, uh, obviously there's a few uh, Taliban. The war's not going that well. They need a bed plan, I guess, to, uh, to house everybody, I guess. Caves. Oh, my God! Oh, Jesus Christ! There's a... <laughs> 40 winks I've got a lot to answer for. Um, there's a... Oh, God, there's a giant squid invasion! There's a... Look, it's a wrong... It's a... It's a wrong island invasion! They've learnt... Have they learnt from Gallipoli? I don't know. They've invaded the wrong island! No, OK, that didn't work. Uh, OK, there's a... There's a... There's a boost invasion! They're invading all of our bloody shopping centres! Invasions. Uh, 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 oh, I can see divorce, this happening. Beats, <laughs> divorces boost beats. invasion. Divorces beats invasion. Vision. There's more here. There's more here. Now he's gone. Giants. Giants. Wait. That's definitely, this is definitely one. Taliban squid divorces. <laughs> Taliban. Taliban. That, was, that relationship was doomed from the start. Yeah. <laughs> Taliban bed. Um, Taliban bed squid because they they need more arms to fight. They need more. Wow. Get stuffed. Um, I, I get a sense that we've sort of given the game away. <laughs> the stupid game. It's a stupid game! I don't like it! I don't like it! I don't like it! I don't like it! I like this, but I don't like the game! I like it, I don't like it, I don't, I don't like it. Anyway, how did I go? Oh, really, really badly. Really, badly. really, really badly. badly. Yeah, yeah, really badly. Really badly. Um, I, I think, think Colin I think needs to go off you. and let off a little tension. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, beats He's the squid. Much, much happier when he beats the squid. <laughs> uh, the headlines were giant squid invasion. You've got, got that. that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Island <laughs> bed boost. You got that at one point too, I, I think. think. at one point. Yes. yes. Yeah. I, I point. got boozing beats bonking and I didn't get five oh, points. Oh, that's right. I didn't give you points, so I can't give you points either. Or oh, you can give me five points. <laughs> Taliban plan wrong. Oh. Well, sad, isn't it? Nothing. And maybe losing five points for destroying the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Lane, minus Thank five. You. In Pakistan, demand for security guards is so strong, some companies have taken to hiring off-duty Taliban. <laughs> One former Australian Army officer described them as Taliban on holidays. They still shoot you, but they'll be wearing shorts. <laughs> uh, the only problem, the only problem when you're a Taliban man going on a holiday is spotting someone you know on the plane. <laughs> I tell you. To my right now, 25 points. To my left, 10 points. Oh. <laughs> 10, 10 points, 10. After the break, hot spot. Up here, the big question about the news of the week. Down there, six brilliant minds and one big plastic liver spot of fun. Robin's team, are you ready? Yeah. 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 
What feature would you like to see on our new submarines? Oh, look, they're all moving forward. A cat flap. <laughs> A fish tank. <laughs> Something that works. <laughs> Barnaby Joyce. <laughs> Strapped to the outside would be nice. Some sort of device so that even when you're under the water, like you can see what's above the. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> windows would be good just to see out the side of the submarine. Honestly, like I'm not joking, windows would be good. <laughs> got a glass bottom. Yeah, you know, that's like, a great like idea. the Barrier Reef. That's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, just get the tourists on there. Yeah. They're really you're really feeling yeah, close yeah. when you're in them. Just... You feel tight. How about a bit of fucking space? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> some couches and yeah, a billy a table. Bat, backgammon. Yeah, <laughs> ping ball. Yeah. Let's space. move on to the yeah. next question. <laughs> what should we make sure? the good people of South Australia don't put on the submarine. Oh. Well, what should we make sure the good people of South Australia don't put in the submarine? Maybe the good people of South Australia? <laughs> <laughs> don't. Not true. Uh, two big uh, silver balls. Maybe. <laughs> it's, it's in the mall. Anybody. Get out of Sydney occasionally. <laughs> what do you not want to see on 3D TV? What do you not want to see on 3D TV? Biggest loser. <laughs> Childbirth. <laughs> Even though it's really, it's very beautiful. <laughs> what gift should Kevin Rudd give Barack Obama? Tony Abbott's greatest gift. <laughs> Virginity is the greatest gift. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think scented candles are always nice. <laughs> uh, uh, six legged milking horse. <laughs> you should just read him some of the love poems we know he's written. <laughs> Pillowcase with the eyes cut out. <laughs> Could borrow that off Rudd's nephew, couldn't he? <laughs> what would you uh, advise Obama not to do while he's here? Barnaby Joyce? <laughs> <laughs> what would you advise Obama not to do while he's here? Oh, no, please. Take a ride on a glass bottomed South Australian submarine with a cat flap. <laughs> Don't even bother applying for refugee status. Sir <laughs> 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 Hooper! <laughs> Under what circumstances would you eat a whale? If I was hungry. <laughs> Greenpeace fundraiser. <laughs> <laughs> Just after I'd finished a huge chip. <laughs> <laughs> what could Japanese scientists study instead of whales? What could Japanese scientists study instead of whales? Not being rude, but maybe cooking, because like the raw stuff is okay. <laughs> but just sometimes, just a little bit of heat. Pss, pss, just a little <laughs> what can men do to be as important as mobile phones? Buy bread. <laughs> yeah, ladies clapping for that one. Men, not so much be able to be turned on if they're within reach. <laughs> Just the plane reference there, because I, I flew up from Melbourne today. Um, I fly all around the place. Um, okay, see you later. 
sync up with my iPad. <laughs> What's the perfect gift for your ex? Oh, he's back. No, he's... he's no, he's, oh, it's Kitty Flanagan! <clears throat> Scented candles are always nice. <laughs> A paper bag full of poo and then you light it. <laughs> What's the you worst thing? Like? Oh. This is what I've learned from Colin. If it's not essentially that funny, do it in this voice. <laughs> and it's hilarious! <laughs> <laughs> A six-legged milking horse. <laughs> Scented candles are always a good choice. <laughs> uh, mm, I can't do you. I want to do you. A six-legged <laughs> six milking horse. <laughs> if you can't think of anything funny, just tease your hair. <laughs> Sorry, sorry that, about that's, that. No, that's really unfair, because I really enjoyed the bag of poo that you sent me, Colin. <laughs> what? <laughs> sorry, Tim. <laughs> hey, you pooper, try and keep your team together. Can you try and... Oh. Well, it's a six-legged mulligan horse. <laughs> that's Tim doing me. <laughs> and that's something I'd pay to see. Uh, what's... What's the worst game to play with the Taliban on holiday? The Pass the Parcel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's... Ooh. Oh, sorry. No, no, no please. Over? No, no, you keep going. <laughs> Crank in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, a six-legged milky <laughs> I was just going to say hide and seek because I still haven't found that guy, have I? <laughs> what should be the eighth deadly sin? <laughs> Egging! <laughs> Anybody? Eighth deadly sin? Giving scented candles? <laughs> you're standing too close to the car so when your bags are coming out. Yes! Oh, yes! 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 You should be allowed to push those people. <laughs> in a Kids, we travel all the time. <laughs> yeah, just, just travel all the time. Okay, last one, last one. A nude portrait has been painted of Tony Abbott. What's the title? Barnaby's bitch. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Sorry. That's it. Strange but true is next. Time to put the strange but true jigsaw together. Mikey, Kitty, Jim, yes. uh, you had the farmyard friend. Oh, oh, I couldn't be any friendlier. <laughs> uh, we also had global warming. Yeah, uh, we changed we, yeah, it we because the you phone. didn't like the phone. I, didn't, I was upset about the phone. So, so we got a so fenced Oh, that's very candle. close to that uh, yeah. flame. Well, I think yeah. there's... And this is what happens when the globe gets warm. Is there hydrogen in that? like a David Bowie concert. Yeah. Wow. Hey, hey, I wish we'd saved that for the ending. <laughs> Go on. I've been Did there. You Sorry. Oh. <laughs> and this. Oh, yeah.
<laughs> now we had. Uh, <laughs> oh man, that's that's a stinker, isn't it? <laughs> wow. We had the. It's like being in the student lounge room. <laughs> Farmyard friend, as you remember, we also had the global warming and Jumpin' Jack Flash. How do they fit together to make a story that is strange but true? Well, something, something all about our farmyard friend. He has an extra horn. <laughs> oh, kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Which would make us think that maybe there's been some genetic modification. So we're thinking oh. genetic modification in animals. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Professor Robbins. <laughs> Shut up, I just danced with a friggin' sheep's head on me. <laughs> Jumping Jack Flash. What, what was the lyric we heard over and over, over again there, Jim? I have no idea. <laughs> Jumping Jack Flash. It's, it's a right gas. Now. Oh, it's the it's gas. A, it's a gas. It's a gas. Gas, hot gas. air. Gas, genetically mo uh, modified animals. Global oh. warming. See where we're going with this? Yes, I do. I do. Yeah. I've got it, sir. Um, they are trying to modify sheep so that they don't um, burp and blow off as much as they used to and to stop them <laughs> emitting <off>. carbon <laughs> <laughs> stuff into the air, Neither. which My... is a complete waste of science. <laughs> <laughs> because all you have to do if you want to stop the sheep from blowing off is instead of separating the ladies from the men, put the man sheep in with the lady sheep and then all the lady sheeps will just suck their bums together and go, we don't even fart anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did you want to add anything, Jim Owen, to that? No, I've never answered a question on this show yet, so I'm not going to start on it. <laughs> Give them a big round of applause. They do have it. Yeah. Uh, last week it was culling a million camels. This week, in a bid to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, Australian scientists are hoping to breed burpless sheep. Critics say burpless sheep are a pipe dream. But that's what they said about the dickless bulls. We now call cows, so... <laughs> Agriculture accounts for 16% of our greenhouse gases, and two-thirds of that comes from grazing livestock. <laughs> Bloody sheep and cows, if they weren't so delicious, we could keep burning coal. <laughs> we could make a non-burpy sheep, or we could make them drink my lanta. <laughs> They're sheep, they'll do what we want them to do. <laughs> or we could kill two burps with one stone by harnessing sheep gas. It's a different kind of wind farm. And why stop at burping? Why not make a sheep that sucks in methane like a fluffy airborne vacuum cleaner? They could blend in with the clouds. <laughs> Don't go away. More Strange But True coming up. Here it is, Strange But True Part 2. Claire, Tim, Colin. Your clues were the cuddly friend. Don't worry, I won't let him sing to you again. <laughs> Uh, we oh, oh, that's not necessary. We also have the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and this. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Sing the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Now put your hands up, up in the club. We just broke up. I'm doing my own little thing. You decided to dip, but now you want to trip Cause another brother noticed me I'm up on him, he up on me Don't pay him any attention Cause I cried my teeth, gave you three good years You can't be mad at me Can we please make this black and white? This is art Black and white, go! Cause if you liked it, then you should've put a ring on him If you liked it, then you should've put a ring on him Don't be mad once you see that you want it Cause if you liked it, then you should've put a ring on it oh, I Cause if you like it, then you should've put a ring on it. If you like it, then you should've put a ring on it. Don't be mad once you see that we want it. Cause if you like it, then you should've put a ring on it. Oh, 
Oh. I've actually done a hammy. I've done double whammy hammy just on both Pop, legs. Pop, like Watch out. Shot. Watch for the... Oh, the big thing. Okay, uh, you might want to get that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll get it. Bend from the waist, darling. Oh. <laughs> you popped your hamsters. Oh. Oh. Oh, so just to recap, ladies and gentlemen, wasn't that extraordinary? Working as a team for the first time in the entire show. <laughs> We have, to recap the cuddly friend, we have the bottle of uh, milky juicy juicy yeah, juice and we have uh, Beyonce's song. Uh, what do all these objects, items go to? I'm just so happy here? that the dance went so well. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's just, it's just great. Oh, oh, I was just, I thought it was Dancing with the Stars there for a second. Um, I don't know. I have no so idea. I'm just so excited the dance went so yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think that it might be a bear story, but the only bear story I know is about the bear that gave birth on the internet recently. Oh. Even bears are doing that now. Yes. The bear bears had 40,000 Facebook hot, friends. Hot and then, air sign um, amateur gives birth. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, any other bear stories that you know well, about? Because you're on the right track. Oh, it's a bear when, when are the poos finally going to marry Tigger? <laughs> it seems to me he's got a suit. It, it's, uh, um, he's got a suit. This is about a baby. Bear's got a suit. This is about marriage. Is it some study that this is going to Oh, be, God, be I know what it is. Oh, Yay! Please, put them out of their misery. Let Kitty answer. I think there was some people and they had a bear as their best man. Maybe sure. Polly, Paul, Polly, Paul, is he in his suit anything. because he represents a kind of bear, like a, a panda bear? Uh, not a panda, panda bear, no, not a panda bear. A I think bear. Kitty knows, do you know, Kitty? Uh, or you can go again and have another crack at it and be hopelessly wrong. <laughs> The bear was the godfather of the new baby. Keep working. The bear is the, the groom. She married the bear because. Uh, the, she, oh, is it? Oh, did she marry the bear? The bear was the best man. Yes. Woo! Got that. Um, <laughs> at a wedding. Yes. The bear this. hit the bottle, and it was embarrassing because he vomited. Yeah, okay. Kitty. And he, like and he did a terrible speech. speech. <laughs> terrible speech. Okay, Kitty, can you take it away? I'm going to give you a hundred points if you get this right. I peaked with my answer before. That's as much as I knew. <laughs> Which is why I then shut up. I just know that there was a couple and they had a bear as a best man. Maybe it's a bottle fed bear. It was like a. a yeah, bear the bottle's bottle confusing. Fed. So is the pink leotard. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, ladies play. and gentlemen, just they haven't got it. Yay! We could do another dance if that would help. Um, uh, the reason the bottle is there is because uh, this fellow. Hand raised the bear. He, he, he oh. I, said, I said bottle fed the bear. Bottle fed the bear. It was a bottle fed bear. Yes. The bear was bottle fed. In Montana, Casey Anderson invited a 500 kilogram grizzly bear called Brutus to be his best man. There's some snaps. He's got a human hand. <laughs> uh, and uh, there they are again. And they're having a lovely time. The bear, of course, is the one with the fur. Casey, <laughs> Casey Hand reared Brutus after he was born in captivity and they became so close the bear was his obvious choice as best man. In fact, they're so close. Had Brutus been a female bear, he may have been the bride. <laughs> We have a few more snaps at this point. Oh, there they are, oh, enjoying nice. some time in the grass. A bit more time in the grass. <laughs> Getting a little bit more relaxed there. <laughs> we can't show you the last shot, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that, one, that little magnum of champagne, it was lovely. <laughs> and that's, some scented that's, candles, that's I believe. Exactly the story I uh, Brutus, uh, the bear there, even organised the Bucks night. And you know you're having a good one when your best man has to be brought down with a tranquilizer dart. <laughs> And with the best man being a bear, the happy couple wished they hadn't held the wedding in the woods. <laughs> Still, Brutus stole the show at the reception where he ate the wedding cake in front of 85 people, then topped it off with two or three of the slower guests. <laughs> Stay tuned here, balls. Fast Money is next. Here we go, the game that's bloody on Australian men, it works fast money. <laughs> According to a new survey, when travelling overseas, 60% of Australians know how to do what in a foreign language? Root. No, actually, uh, <laughs> ask, uh, ask for a beer. Thank you very much, order a beer. Order a beer. A Scottish businessman sitting in a traffic jam has been fined £50 for not being in proper control of his car. What was he doing? Sleeping. No. Eating. No. Talking. No. Having sex. No. Thinking. I think you just guessed. Taking his contacts <laughs> out. Anybody? Uh, uh, he was letting the bear drive. <laughs> Anyone, anyone know it? Anyone Wearing know? a wig. No. He was no. mixing a martini. Blowing his nose. No one gets it. Uh, in the US, state of Georgia, a man has been found guilty of child cruelty after an incident in a supermarket. What did he do? He actually went to uh, smack a kid. Yes. But the kid wasn't his. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He slapped, he slapped a child and it wasn't his child. Thank you. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, 
we are still alive. Was it, it, come on. Was it asking for it? <laughs> Look, we <laughs> never do it, but we've all thought of it, haven't we? In Scotland, a pet owner took his dog to the vet after hearing a strange rattling sound. What Golf was balls. Causing? How many? 18. 13. Uh, 13. <laughs> Wrong. 13, 13 go golf balls. Was the Scotsman using him for putting practice? Sit! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the owner said Oscar finds golf balls like truffles. Oh. Well, there's a bit of money to be made from that dog in France, one would think. Yeah. And I'm going to throw this last one open. A man has been banned from New York's public parks after being arrested for an act of public indecency. What was he allegedly doing? Dancing to Beyonce's single ladies. <laughs> Actually, he was, um, he was sexually attracted to uh, foliage, as indeed uh, he, was, he was shagging trees. It's barky. He was, he was bark barking mad. mad. <laughs> So in the bear pit tonight, Mikey Robbins, Kitty Flanagan and Jamoan scored a grisly 170 points. <laughs> Morning, Claire Hooper, Tim Minchin and Colin Lane on 10. Uh, 10. Oh. Hey! Four. Hey! It's just unfair. Ten.com.au slash GNW is the place to get the podcast. Go behind the scenes and see the photographs of what Brutus the Bear did on the honeymoon. You must be over 18. <laughs> so we say, get better soon, Barnaby Joyce, honestly, and leave you with the good news for the week ahead. The Commonwealth Bank will announce its half-yearly results for a small fee. <laughs> BHP will announce its results too. Plundering resources is up, rape of the land is doing very well, and turning the planet into a wasteland has exceeded all expectations. <laughs> Cliff Richard and the Shadows Tour will hit Adelaide and break five hips. <laughs> the... <laughs> oh, the old people love it. <laughs> Laughing out loud. Who are they, Dad? Who are they? Uh, the Gold Coast will host the launch of a campaign called Warning Signs of a Heart Attack. Oh, the excitement. <laughs> oh, the excitement. I'm getting a tingling sensation in my left arm. <laughs> Uh, in Canberra, the Federal Police Commissioner will be at the Defence and Security Summit, otherwise known as the Truncheon and Munchen Luncheon. <laughs> That's funny. Truncheon and Munchen Luncheon. Yeah. That last good. Like okay. yeah. And next Monday, it's the Allen Border Medal Dinner. In honour of the Pakistan captain, main course will be a cricket ball. <laughs> good night. Good night.